Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute moan. The topic of this 10 minute moan is yet another delay on the completion of the A9 to make it a full dual carriageway. This is one of Scotland's most dangerous roads and it uh, has already been delayed. Originally it was due for completion in 2025, SNP I think about five months ago, put that up the park by 10 years and now have a new completion date of 2035 and already there's suggestions that that's not going to be met. This is a new target we only made in the last six months, right? Now, the Express have um, got an article on this. I'll use some of the information from their article. Their headline is, A9 drilling shock as SNP admits 2035 deadline may not be met despite a decade-long delay. Oh dear. The SNP government has confessed that its 2035 deadline for drilling the dangerous A9 may not even be met. Despite the decade-long delay already announced, the SNP promised to upgrade the road between the Highlands and Perth by 2025 during 2021, a few years after they seized power. But after years of dithering, the only two sections being completed, then Transport Secretary Jenny Goldruth finally admitted that it would not be done, blaming the likes of COVID, the war on the Ukraine and Brexit. A new completion date was set last December with 30, the 2035 boasted about. But then that's, so there we go, this thing that they started in 2011, saying that they would have done in 2025, is going to be 10 years delayed because of COVID, the war on the Ukraine and Brexit. So we've added, we went from a 14 year project to 24 years, all because of this thing that's happened, these things that have happened in a sort of two year window. Right? These people are bonkers. People cannot apply common arithmetic, right? Even if you've done nothing during COVID, you've done nothing um, during the COVID, you know, whatever, I don't have a bigger belief how the war in Ukraine's helped, you know, slow down this project. But even if you've done nothing for two years, then logic would suggest you would only need to add on two years at the end, not 2027. You've added on 10 years to 2035 and still as if you're going to miss that deadline. These people are just not normal, right? This pledge of timing for completing the dueling of the road is now in doubt already, after the project's website suggests sections will be finished by the end of 2035 at the earliest. This is not a solid commitment that the route will be done by the same time already announced. Now, if you're saying 10 years early that we might not hit that deadline and we're, we're hoping to finish, you know, at the end of that year, it's not looking great, is it? it? It just doesn't look fantastic whatsoever. And the poor people in the Highlands that, would, you know, are looking forward to, you know, 20 years of promises, actually, about this um, project are getting let down again. The official website for the initiative, www.a9julian.scot, claims that the final three sections between Killycranky and Crub and Moor will only be fully opened by the end of 2035 at the earliest. A contract for 150 million of work between Tomatin to Moy is expected to be announced this summer, while the winner of the 155 million Tay Crossing to Balan Luig project is scheduled to be confirmed in the summer next year. That's not started, that's not finished, that's just starting. This lack of definite completion date has been blasted by rivals. Murdo Fraser, Scottish Tory MSP, told the Times of rural communities who rely on the A9 deserve better, tend to agree with their Murdo, and the SNP government, which is constantly shifting the goalposts. The nationalists will never would never have allowed these continued delays in a major road in the central belt, but they are all too happy to neglect rural Scotland's lifeline routes. Nicola Sturgeon's outright refused to apologise this week and attempted to shift the blame instead of admitting her negligence has caused life to be lost on the non-dual road. She's taken SNP um, normal practice to the nth degree. Just blame somebody else. Ms Sturgeon was forced to say sorry for her failure to make much progress in dueling the road when she appeared in front of MSPs last week. She denied claims that she 
and her ministers had been dishonest about the entire situation, and it took them two years before the planned 2025 completion date uh, was admitted as unachievable. This was the suggestion that they knew in 2022 that they were never going to be ready in 2025, so they never bothered telling anybody at all. They went, oh, hold on, we're in 2024 now. Folk will maybe be expecting that road to be finished in 12 months, right? Then they went, oh, hold on. It's going to happen. We're going to, um, we're going to just delay 10 years. Current First Minister John Sweeney has already pledged to meet a cross-party group of MSPs to see if the project can be accelerated. As the death toll rises on the road, his predecessor Hamza Yousaf committed to getting elements of the dual carriageway completed during his stunt in the Butte House, but stepped down before that's happened. Aye, he'd ordered newspapers that he had to go, yet yeah, the time has time is up at Butte House, right? Documents in the public domain also showed that SNP ministers were warned two years ago not to put a definitive date on the £3.7 billion upgrade of the A9, with officials being concerned that even if works was carried out as fast as possible, it could take until the mid-2030s for it to be finished. For only two of the 11 sections to be complete, leaving 77 miles to still do, when approached for comment, Transport Scotland referred back to December 2023 announcement stating that all A9 is anticipated to be dual carriageway by the end of 2035. Yet their own website suggests different. So, there we go. What we're seeing here is just an extension of complete bedlam with the SNP trying to actually, you know, finish something. Telling lies and hiding the truth from the public for as long as possible. And looks as if even after six months that their 10-year extended date was under jeopardy already. Meanwhile, the A9 remains one of the most dangerous and unfortunately think it's Scotland's uh, road with most deaths per year and I've been up that road uh, recently myself up to um, what's called Dingwall and although lovely it is, as lovely surroundings it, it is bloody dangerous because a lot of it's single uh, carriageway, there's a lot of goods vehicles on it that slow cause um, backups of uh, cars who want to drive a bit faster than a truck and people do take chances and it's quite a busy road. So as dangerous. I mean, it's a lovely road. It's a beautiful. Anybody that's never done it and, you know, um, enjoy a nice drive with some nice scenery, it is breathtaking at, at points. But it's not safe. And the people in the Highlands have been promised this. I think it's went back, even actually, to be fair, to before um, SNP's time, there's been talk of, you know, making this a dual carriageway. And can you imagine how much easier it would be for the transport network, you know, goods, etc., going both ways to the Highlands. So, you know, it's a very, very worthwhile um, proposition, but it seems just to get knocked in the back burner. And what will happen is whoever takes over uh, Holyrood in two years or sooner, if we get a Scottish election sooner, they'll just need to bear the burden. They'll just need to, you know, be honest with Scottish people and say, this needs done. And we'll need to just plough as much as we can into it to get this completed. And it will affect other services in the meantime, but that should have happened over the last 10 years. But it's not. We've been moving funds to try and stack up free prescriptions and free buses and the like, you know. These things are very, very important to the people in the Highlands. So um, there we go. Um, more mental <laughs> uh, stuff about the SNP and their inability to handle big projects as a government. Enjoyed the video? Give us a thumbs up, please. If you've uh, not already done so, please subscribe. But most importantly of all, have a great day. Cheerio, bye now.